being such a large organization that caters to the interests of people and pedigree dogs across various interests, from dog shows to dog sports, the FCI has what they call commissions, which are essentially committees of people that are dedicated or have a vested interest in those particular areas uh, of, of, of the canine world that the FCI also incorporates. And these people are, 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 for want of a better word, like guardians of this particular element. And so they form what the FCI has as commissions that um, go into looking into all the aspects and areas of that particular area of interest in pedigree dogs, um, whether it's a sport, or whether it's um, the building blocks of, of you know, of, of a particular breed. So the breed standards, um, the scientific commission, these are all commissions, what the FCI calls commissions, and they're formed by members who are all volunteers that put their time and effort into um, developing and being part of the groups that are the custodians of this particular area of interest. So in this series, I speak to many of the presidents or people from these various commissions that the FCI has. There are several commissions, and I hope to cover and be able to speak to as many of them as possible to, again, bring a better understanding of how the FCI works and how these people who are breeders and, and you know, trialers or, or exhibitors with interest in that particular area, how they are, are part of the FCI and form an integral and important um, committee within the FCI to help bring better uh, meaning and understanding to this area. So I hope through this series, you get a better understanding of how these commissions work and how they assist the FCI in being this global organization with a universal interest to people in all areas of pedigree dogs. Hi, everyone, and welcome to this episode where we talk to the various presidents of the FCI commissions. And today, it's my privilege and honor to speak to Mr. Franz Janssen, all the way from the Netherlands, um, who is the president of the Utility Dog Commissions of the FCI. Hello, Franz, and welcome to the show. Good morning, Govi. Hello to you also. How are you today? You're doing well. I'm really good. What about yourself? Well, I'm really good. I'm fresh. Just uh, walk the dog, so I'm totally prepared for this uh, chat with you. Excellent, excellent. So let's get going. Um, could you, uh, Franz, briefly tell us about yourself, uh, where you're from? Obviously, I've said you're from the Netherlands. Um, and more importantly, how you got involved with pedigree dogs and, and then the sport of utility dogs. Okay, I'm from the Netherlands. I was born in a city, Breda, in the southern part of uh, the Netherlands, in a big family. And we always had dogs. So. My first dog I had when I was about 10, and it was a mixed breed. Uh, the name was uh, Sigan, but uh, you translate also as uh, in English as a gypsy. <laughs> uh, from that on, uh, it was a virus, and I never <laughs> lost it again. Okay. So after my studies and, and work, at my last uh, work was uh, director of a hotel school here in the Netherlands. I retired. Uh, and all these years, I was involved in, in dog sport. Okay. And, so, and which, which yeah. sport did you start with maybe? Like, was it obedience or what, what did you get involved with? No, I started with uh, uh, IPO. It was called in those days IPO and the Germans called it Schutzhund. Yes. Uh, so that was uh, the thing I started. But okay. my preference was uh, tracking one of the parts of IPO. Right. Okay. Nice. Nice. And that, that's what is your passion and interest at the moment. I mean, that's what you you concentrate on. Yes, uh, that is my passion still over all these years. I also wrote two books about uh, tracking, uh, but uh, my great passion, in fact, is is dogs and and training with dogs and being with dogs. Uh, oh, wow. So I didn't, that, I, I didn't realize you'd written two books. How fantastic! Are they in English or in Dutch? Well, what... They are uh, in Dutch, in English, and in Spanish. Wow. Wow. Okay. Um, we need to get the names of the books. Uh, do a bit of promotion of your books. <laughs> this is not a promotion <laughs> video <laughs> film, but uh, later on, I will pass it on to you so that you are, are able to read it. Nice. Can you tell us how long have you been the president of the commission and how did you get involved with this FCI commission? Well, I got involved with this F FCI commission after uh, starting an own club in uh, Breda. Mm -hmm. I, uh, at a certain time, I became a member of uh, the uh, Dutch Utility Dog Commission. 
Okay. And uh, they delegated me, I think it was uh, 1995 or something, into the FCI Commission for Utility Dogs. And that was uh, the start uh, of all of it. Yeah. So in the beginning, I was uh, a member. And because of uh, my possibility to translate, uh, my uh, the, the president in those days was uh, from uh, Austria, Mr. Strasser. He spoke uh, German and the delegates were from all over the world. And yeah, the language uh, to understand each other was uh, also in those days, English. Right. So that was uh, uh, good for the commission. Uh, there were of course more people than myself that could uh, translate, but I started uh, more or less like a translator for uh, the president. Nice. And after some years of uh, being a member, I was voted uh, as a vice president. And then in 2006, I believe, I was voted uh, as president of the Utility Dog Commission. Wonderful, wonderful. And, and you've, you've remained president ever since and uh, have continued in that role. That's correct, because every two years after the General Assembly of the FCI, there is uh, a new vote. So since then, uh, I was voted uh, again and again uh, to uh, remain president. And as a matter of fact, now I have been there for about 15 or 16 years. I think, uh, yeah, the job is not finished, but perhaps uh, the time is uh, is there for some new blood. Excellent, but you must be doing a good job for, for you to have been kept that long. I voted in every two years. That's, uh, you must be doing something. Could you tell us, do you know how long the commission has been in existence for? This the commission was uh, founded by the FCI in 1956. It was uh, approved uh, during the General Assembly in uh, Dortmund in Germany in uh, 1956. Wonderful. So it's uh, quite an old commission. Yes, uh, definitely. And, and, and for the benefit of, of those who don't really know what the Utility Dogs is about or the Utility Commission, could you tell us a little bit of what is the Utility Commission? The Utility Dog Commission is the commission that uh, takes care of uh, uh, some sports uh, for utility dogs, like uh, we told before IPO, that is now called IGP, right. because that in the regulations there are more uh, uh, different uh, exams to do. Okay. Uh, they also take care about uh, the regulations for the uh, trials for uh, the world championships and so on. Okay. And of course, uh, during time, everything uh, evaluates. So also the knowledge of our dogs and uh, to adjust and adapt uh, the regulation from time to time. Uh, the commission is uh, there to do so and to make proposals for the general committee of the FCI uh, to approve or not approve. Okay. And, and so we've mentioned IGP. Um, tracking, of, obviously, because that's your interest. What else, uh, what other disciplines come under utility dogs? The utility? Um, in, you, in IGP, so you have this uh, tracking separate yeah. for the specialists. Yeah. And then in uh, the other utility dog, uh, IGP, you have uh, IGP, as we call it, uh, it uh, has three phases. Okay. Uh, tracking, obedience, and protection in one examination. Okay. Then you have also article search. Okay. It's a, a different thing where yeah. the dog is only searching for articles in, in a closed surrounding. Yeah. Uh, there is also a companion dog, international companion dog okay. in uh, three levels. Uh, then of course you have also endurance. Okay. Uh, that is uh, for the dog to walk uh, next to the dog handler for about uh, 20 kilometers. Okay. And in some uh, cases, uh, you see that in um, uh, the East European countries, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, Slovenia, Slovakia, uh, they have endurance uh, trips from 40, 60 or 80 kilometers. Wow, wow. Okay. So <laughs> that's, uh, but that is for a certain type of dog. Okay, wonderful. And, and you mentioned a little bit that the commission's um, function is to uh, make proposals, look you know, uh, keep track of the regulations um, that are following, you know, that the FCI follows. Um, is there anything else that the commission 
does, you know, that, that you know, what about training of judges? How, how about all that? Yes, not only the training of judges, uh, the commission has set also a regulation for FCI judges, national and international. Um, and then in this regulation uh, that is approved by the uh, general committee, of course, uh, there are the minimum uh, requirements. Mm -hmm. So every country that is a member of the FCI can adjust these regulations, but right. they have to obey the minimum minimum regulations for FCI judges. Okay, okay. And and um, what about the members of your commission? Are they what? How many members and what countries are they from? Is it? A global representation of, of uh, from all sections of the FCI, or is it? Well, you can say it's a global representation. At the moment, we have about thirty-seven uh, delegates, and they are coming from mostly from Europe, but also from uh, Japan, from uh, the Philippines, uh, Argentina, uh, Brazil, Russia, Israel. So you can see it's uh, really a, a global uh, thing. Yes, and, and, and obviously have, um, I mean, it, it seems to be extensive in all the FCI sections. So um, how, how popular is this, the, the sport of utility dogs globally? How would you say how popular it is globally? Well, I think it's popular, but uh, the last year you see that is, uh, it is a little bit declining. Yeah. Uh, Although we have more and more participants at the World Championships uh, in the disciplines we are uh, responsible for. Uh, we have uh, every year the World Championship for tracking dogs. Okay. Uh, that are the specialists. Um, every dog has to do two, uh, two uh, tracks on right. two separate days. Okay. And a track, you must say, is about uh, 12, uh, no, to about 1,800 passes okay and three hours old at least with uh, seven articles okay. and then we have the world championship for igp uh, okay. and there we have about 150 to 160 participants from all over the world wow but it's also the same for tracking uh, because uh, for the first time this year and we hope it uh, we can uh, let it go through because of this uh, COVID pandemic. Uh -huh. uh, for the first time we have from South America, from Guatemala. Uh, so mm -hmm. that uh, makes uh, it uh, yeah, more more global as it was. Okay, so th th these are yearly events and they happen on the one weekend or over a couple of days together. So you do the trekking and then the IGP competitions go on as well, is that? The trekking is a separate world championship. It's uh, done over, uh, uh, half a week from Wednesday until uh, Sunday. Okay. And the uh, IGP starts also normally on Wednesday until Sunday okay. uh, because uh, the, the examination of this, uh, every uh, participant has to do one phase on one day. Okay. So in a time schedule, uh, you can uh, do, for instance, tracking on Wednesday, okay. uh, obedience uh, on uh, Thursday and the protection phase on Saturday or Sunday. Nice. And, and, and so what, what, I'm, what I understand from what I'm, you're saying is that most of these dogs compete in all three or at least one or two of the, of the different events that are going on. So they might do tracking and uh, is that the case? Or, or no, no, you... no, it's not the case. Okay. You have one world championship for tracking dogs. Ah, okay. That's okay. a specialist, uh, oh. yeah, the tracking dog. Right. And then uh, that's normally in, in April, May. Okay. And then in the second week uh, of uh, September, in the second week plus weekend of September, you have the FCI world championship for working dogs or utility dogs, as they say. Okay. And they have to do this three phases in uh, the IGP, tracking, obedience, and protection. Okay, and all the, these two main events um, are organized by your commission. They're, they're, the, your commission um, sort of sets it up and, and runs it, but it, in different countries or in the same place always? No, no, it's uh, run by uh, the regulations for this uh, championships are set up by our commission. Okay. And later on, of course, uh, approved by the general committee. Okay. Uh, but uh, countries that want to organize uh, these world championships, 
uh, they report uh, to the president of the utility dock commission okay. and then together with one of the members of the commission uh, who will be a supervisor uh, right. the organization is set up okay and then in the beginning of the year normally is that in uh, in march the second weekend in march we have a meeting in the country where the world championship will take place right okay so we can see the stadium uh, if we want we can go and see the tracking fields uh, and so on okay but uh, all along in the organization uh, the commission will support uh, the organization to uh, to get well and uh, everything uh, will be in order at the time that uh, the world championship will uh, take place Okay. Okay. Nice. Nice. And and um, do do you do you think um, the utility dogs or the sport of utility dogs is a growing or declining sport? Um, I think uh, globally seen, it's it's declining because uh, young people um, are less interested in this uh, kind of sport because for IGP uh, you have to uh, go to a club. You have to take uh, the time for go to track your dog, uh, to teach to track your dog with a, an instructor. After that, you have to do the obedience uh, phase, and after that, uh, protection. So it costs a lot of time, yeah. and a lot of young people want to spend <laughs> that time, the free time, in another way, uh, yeah. to socialize. Or IT uh, is uh, a big thing. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons that we, as a commission, try to adjust uh, or adapt our uh, regulations okay. uh, to make it more interesting for young people uh, to join uh, this uh, sport. Fantastic. Uh, that, that's a very progressive. And have you seen more of a decline as the years have gone in the last few years? Or has it been something that you've seen happening gradually? Um, with you know less and less younger people involved in the sport, I must say that I, for my personal uh, yeah. uh, view, I think the last ten years uh, you see this uh, declining uh, more and more, and for that reason, as a matter of fact, the commission has uh, uh, installed a, a subcommission, okay, about twelve or thirteen people, uh, to think about uh, the program, right. Where are we now? How is the program now? How should it uh, look in the future? And in such a way that it is more uh, attractive for young people. So the first thing they do is uh, in three groups for each phase, one small group, uh, thinking about uh, how to change uh, the present uh, regulations okay. into a program that is more attractive. Right. Okay. And after that, uh, and it uh, will take some years, uh, we will uh, finalize it in, in a new, uh, perhaps maybe a total new program for IGP. Right. Okay. Okay. Interesting you mentioned IGP because that leads me to my next question. Um, do you feel that IGP or protection dogs is um, very misunderstood by the public? that they think we are trying to train a dog to be aggressive, uh, you know, to, to do this. What is, what is your opinion on that? My personal opinion is that uh, this is really misunderstood yeah. uh, because the character of a dog is inherited. And there is a big uh, place in this for the breeders. Yes. Uh, it is known if you breed aggression with aggression, you will get more aggression. Yes. If you breed social and social together, you will get more social. Right. But what we are aiming for is um, by um, the latest uh, learning principles uh, for uh, animals and also for our dogs uh, to teach our dogs in a way uh, that is pleasant for them, mm -hmm. uh, also for the dog handler, mm -hmm. to obey in every uh, circumstance and under any circumstance, because uh, it must be a game, a play for the dog, right. and it must be uh, good for society. Our society must uh, not suffer under our sport. Yes. And our dogs have, of course, this uh, different drives in them. 
And one of the things we have to take care of is that we keep this natural uh, given drives. And one of them is aggression. And right. natural aggression is not a bad thing. Yes. Eh? yes. Dogs need it to perform because yes. our dogs come from the same breeders yes. as the dogs that go to the police, to the military, to the right. border control, yes. search and rescue dogs, yes. uh, and so on. Eh? Also, the dogs that uh, will be like we call it helping dogs for yes. people with a disease, uh, diabetic, epileptic uh, people. Eh? They can be very, very useful. Yes. yes. And I think that uh, people have uh, a wrong idea if they think, think that we are training dogs to bite. For the dog, it, it's, it's a play, it's a game. Yes. And uh, he learns that if he bites in this special sleeve that his helper is uh, using, Mm. Uh, it's more a game than it's, it's a real aggression. But also, of course, the way of training your dog. Yeah. Uh, if you train your dog with aggression, the result will be that you get re re aggression. Right. And of course, like uh, in humans, you have uh, different types of uh, uh, dogs with different uh, characters. Yes. So you must know what to do. So it's also good to train the trainers. And for that, we also train yearly uh, the judges. And then last time we had, for instance, in Austria, in Biedermannsdorf, more than 100 judges from all over the world to discuss regulations and the way to train, uh, the way to judge. Yes. Because in our opinion, FCI judges and of course, judges uh, common, uh, are not only there to uh, evaluate what they see, what you perform, but also uh, an educator to tell you, okay, my friend, it was good today, but mm. if you could this uh, improve by the way, by doing that, mm. it will be better. Yes. So they are not only there to judge, but also to, to teach more or less. It's so encouraging to hear because, uh, you know, then they are really doing uh, more than just one function of judging, but they're actually um, helping to educate people and I guess the public because what people misunderstand is that these dogs, the breeds that tend to participate in protection dogs are dogs that are bred to protect and to guard. Um, you know, they're, they're, they are, as you said, they have this natural instinct to guard and to protect. And yes. so they're doing what comes naturally to them rather than being trained to do something. And that's why, as you said, I like what you said. It's a game. It's fun. Um, yes, it's a game. And, but and they're highly trained. And they're highly trained. I think people miss the point. These dogs are highly trained. You know. Yes. Uh, of course, uh, people should realize that uh, the dogs normally live in a pack. Mm. And if you get your dog in your family and he is treated in, in a normal way, he will feel himself as part of the pack. Absolutely. And one of the things he will do is to, to protect yes. this pack. Yes. And if he has a good leader in the pack, yeah. then it will not be any problem yes. in a normal way. And, and you know, um, with dog welfare a big issue, and, and especially with the FCI paying a lot of attention to this, um, what sort of rules, I, I know you mentioned your judges uh, don't do more than just judge, but what sort of safeguards are there in, in place for during the competitions and during uh, training for the welfare of dogs that have been put in by your commission? Yeah, um, it's, it's a big issue. And uh, in our regulations, we have set uh, rules for that. Mm -hmm. So it's forbidden, uh, for instance, to use uh, e collar or pinch collar. Uh, it must be uh, a training according to the animal protection uh, law. And if, uh, in, for instance, in the World Championship, uh, there is a report that somebody is using this unpermitted uh, training uh, devices or uh, training in an unpermitted way, there is one thing that will follow disqualification. There will be uh, an, uh, a disqualification noted in the scorebook of the doc. Right. There will be a report made up, sent to the NCO, okay. responsible for this dog handler, right. and it will be reported to the FCI. 
Okay, because it's up to the FCI General Committee to take action. Okay. Uh, it's uh, for the Commission to report. And as a matter of fact, if you go to the FCI website, uh, you click on the utility doc commission, you will see our statement about that. Okay. Okay. Yes. Because I personally see, and I'm not the only one, uh, the doc is man's best friend Absolutely. for yes. many, many years. Right. So he needs uh, to be treated in, in a right way. Yes. And I think it's so important because sometimes when we become competitive, we forget that. And, and it's so important to remember that. It's so nice to hear that that's the focus of your commission, that you also, you know, besides the sport, it's about the dog and it's about the dog being a member of your family and, and being part of, you know, to be treated um, properly. Yeah, for instance, this is also uh, one thing you can notice if you are in this scene. Mm. Uh, in the World Championship for Tracking Dogs, everybody, every participant, is also taking care of the other one because it's a different kind of uh, population. Yes. And we all know it is uh, the flowers or the dead because uh, <laughs> you can train one year or two years or three years to come to the uh, World Championship. Your dog is not a computer. Yes. It can go wrong one day yes. for one or another reason. Yes. But then everybody is sad that he couldn't make it. And in, on the other hand, it's more competitive in IGP. Okay. Uh, and sometimes I think that uh, some dog handlers uh, are more focused uh, to be on the podium by themselves as a person <laughs> than as the dog <laughs> that could make the performance. But it should, it should be the dog. As a matter of fact, it is teamwork. Yes. So yes. that is also what the, the, the judges are looking uh, for. Yes. Do I see a team? And how do they react on each other? For instance, uh, during the obedience, if the dog handler gives a command, what is the reaction of the dog? Yeah. Is he more or less afraid yeah. in the first uh, moment he hears this uh, command? Or is he joyful and he is reacting in a good way? All those things are uh, taken in to the evaluation by the judges. Excellent. I mean, because they, as you said, teamwork, and, and they have to see that rapport between the handler and the, and the dog um, as being something so important. And, and it's so wonderful to hear. Um, Franz, what, what are your aspirations for this commission and for this uh, utility or working dog commission of the FCI? Um, what's the ultimate goal? What, what, would, what would you like to see happen? with the commission and with the sport? What I would like to see, my personal view in this is that, uh, of course, this commission has to, to stay for a long, long time. Uh, if we can achieve that everybody uh, do th there's something, train or go somewhere or do something with their dog, yes. uh, that would be nice. It can be in, in a competition, uh, it could be uh, just for fun, but do something with your dog. Yes. Uh, because they deserve it. Yes. Uh, if you don't uh, play with your dog, if you don't uh, give him enough uh, time to, to run and to, to, to play with you, uh, it's, it's uh, becoming a poor creature. Yes. But they deserve so much more because they help us in, in so many ways. Uh, if we mentioned the border control, epileptic or diabetic. Uh, COVID even, they're tra doing, they track COVID patients. Yes, uh, COVID, they, you can train your dog to, to uh, sniff COVID. Yeah. Uh, we, in Holland, we had uh, the first MRSA bacteria detecting dog uh, and so on. Uh, search and rescue, uh, they try to improve uh, the, the uh, the products we, we can create to, to investigate and to sniff. But mm. until now, it's uh, the dog's nose, for instance, who yes. is superior in, in uh, a lot of uh, situation and helping us in a lot of ways. Yes. That's it, man's best friend, isn't it? They're, they're, that's what it is man's best friend. Yes. <laughs> if you see how much he is helping us. Yes. And uh, I just remember now one of your earlier questions. Uh, if you buy a dog or you are given a dog, 
most of the people don't know what they are getting or what they are buying. They know the price. <laughs> but if you know that your dog is looking at you all the time when he is in your neighborhood, he can see your mood. He yes. can feel what you are feeling yes. because he is looking at you. So I would uh, suggest to the people, take some time, look at your dog and look to his body language. Look at what he is telling you. Yes. I, I mean, this is it, you know, the, I, I have so much respect for people and working dogs because it is a big commitment. Uh, they, they understand what these dogs were bred to do. Um, they are, you know, they're giving these dogs the opportunity to do that. Um, at the same time, they're doing life-saving stuff, but it is a lot of work to train the dogs, to get them to the levels, um, you know, to, to do this. It's not easy. Yeah. It's commitment. Um, but, but it also keeps you fit, Gobi. Yeah, <laughs> I could do with that. I could do with being more fit. <laughs> but you know, my dog sounds. I don't, I'm not sure how, how how much they could do tracking. But <laughs> yeah, so, but so, I'd be. <laughs> for myself, for instance, I'm 76 and I go three wow. at least three times a week tracking with uh, tracking dogs. So it keeps me going on also. Oh wow, uh, that's that's great to hear. And friends, I mean, you know, I I know we've um, Malaysia has sent some. Um, some participants to the world championship and it's nice to hear that you've had from Guatemala and, and I hope that you know now that the world is becoming a smaller place um, that there are more and more global participants but for someone who wants to get involved where can they get more information about the commission about how they can you know participate at these world championships and all that can you let us know how people can do that from you know outside of Europe especially especially it's very easy, Gofi. If they go to the uh, FCI website, okay. www.fci.ba, yeah. uh, they can find uh, almost all information. Okay. Uh, also, all uh, the commissions of the FCI, and I think it's about 24 commissions, yeah. are there to find. And if they want uh, to contact, uh, they can through the, the bureau, they can talk, contact uh, every commission they want. Okay. And of course, they also can tell uh, or inform their national kinological organizations about the importance to be in this commission, because then you are also uh, one of the, the people that decides which way we are going. Yes. And you get to participate. In a particular yeah. And, you, and they get to come to these meetings, get trained, hear yes. about the latest techniques. Okay. Perfect. And you can uh, go to these uh, judge meetings. Uh, Afterwards, you can invite uh, trainers or judges uh, to educate you. Uh, for instance, uh, I think a lot of people uh, from this uh, doc uh, scene go over the world yes. Uh, yes. To, to inform people. Uh, and I think there, is, uh, there are a lot of possibilities for them to find uh, what they are looking for. Wonderful. Because if they write a letter to, the, for instance, or a, an email to the FCI office, uh, the office will uh, forward it to the to the right uh, commission, to the right uh, person to react on that. Excellent. Well, Franz, thank you so much. It's been so interesting to know a little bit more about this, um, the, the FCI Utility Commission or the Working Dog Commission. Um, you know, again, my respect to all the participants and yourselves who spent so much of time doing this. Um, and I wish you all the best. And uh, maybe one day I'll come and visit one of the, the, the championship shows or, or the world championship to see, see everyone in action. It'll be most interesting, I think, to watch. You're very welcome, Gofi. And thank you also for this chat. It was nice to, uh, to do it uh, in this oh, way. We, we, want, we want, you know, people to know about the other things that FCI does, people always assume that it's purely dog shows, but there's so many other things that the FCI oh, so, does. so much more. Yeah, which is support. So, and utility dogs, the working dogs is one of those important commissions. So, thank you for your time. Um, I've really enjoyed chatting with you and I uh, appreciate uh, your, your feedback and your insight into this wonderful commission. You're very welcome, Gopi. Thank you. Take care and see you soon. Take care.